The story I'm about to tell you begins on a bridge near downtown Kansas City where the Missouri River and the Rock Creek converge. I went there because I had read that that was the location where the Native Americans engaged in trade with the French merchants in the early 1800s. Kansas City, Missouri was founded as a Native American trading post. And I pay attention to those types of things because I'm a Native American. I looked west, and my imagination just wiped away all the buildings. And in a moment of silence and clarity, I was able to see things the way they used to be. Ghostly, translucent, animated images of Native American canoes just floating down the river, replete with goods for trade. And I could hear them speaking in their native tongue about their long journey and the commerce that would soon commence. And then I looked east toward Independence, Missouri, which isn't very far away. And I could envision wagons full of people anxiously holding tight to all of their belongings because they were beginning a long and perilous journey known as the Oregon Trail. And then I looked south toward Loose Park in the plaza. And I could see Union soldiers from neighboring Kansas squaring off in a fight against the Confederate soldiers of Missouri in the Battle of Westport, a decisive Civil War event known alternatively as the Gettysburg of the West. And when I reemerged from these visions, I realized that I was actually staring directly at the backside of a Harris Casino. <laughs> because that's what exists there now. But you see, I was standing in two worlds, separated only by time. Significant historical events live all around that place, and no one can see them until now. I know all about living in two worlds. My whole life, I've been traveling between the Paula Indian Reservation and the city of San Diego. And while they're only 60 miles apart, going between the two is kind of like traveling backwards and forwards through time. These two worlds shaped my mind and how I see things. And now, I want to give you the ability to see things the way I do. What if we used augmented reality and geolocation software to transform public places around the world into educational hotspots that would allow locally relevant content to unfold around us in real time. Yeah. Just as I had imagined on that bridge. We can. We can use technology to produce experiences that bring more meaningful insights to the places that we go every day, but we just have no idea what ever happened there. Using just your smartphone and cellular service, here's an example of what you can now see. By building and deploying extended reality layers on top of the natural world, we enable users to see far beyond the world that exists today. In 2014, after taking an executive course at Harvard, I realized we're sitting at a transformative moment in human civilization. The thought crossed my mind that humanity as we know it is over. That it's no longer just us, it's no longer just humans, it's humans plus one. And that plus one is software. It was becoming clear to me that humans and software were merging and that we aren't going back. Now, as any Native American person might, I kind of wondered what impact new technology might have on my civilization. <laughs> and then I wondered, how can we take this and steer it in a beneficial way? It was then that I knew my purpose. My purpose was to use software to transform my ancient culture into a 21st century format, to go from traditional to digital, in a process I call Tradigital. But this was not without risk. Big changes like this can be controversial in small communities. Our culture is the vessel that holds our teaching, and so I had to think long and hard before attempting to transform something so sacred and untouched. I asked an elder about it, and he said, Kilma, our civilization and culture must adapt, or we become history. He and I both sat with those words for a long time. 
Ultimately, we decided to take the first step and prepare our culture for the next seven generations, the coming ones, the digital ones. In 2015, we started our cultural futurism movement by digitizing a well-known tribal stick game named Pion. We did this for mobile handhelds and then geofenced it to Indian reservations. That same year, I published an article in the Tribal Business Journal about how tribes can use mixed realities and geolocation to transform their culture through gaming. Since 2015, the vision has expanded into what you see today. At the heart of what we're doing is the marriage between emerging technologies with the various elements of culture. For example, we know that machine learning, image recognition, augmented reality, geolocation, we know that that's a powerful combination of tool for learning languages in the places where those languages are spoken. Similarly, we understand that point clouds in Unity, digital 3D scanning, stereoscopic 360 video, ambisonic audio, all these things and others can be used to create digital worlds around us. And inside of these small worlds, we can place digital twins of cultural artifacts or artwork that can, we can interact with or purchase. We can place storytellers or performers next to you and they can serenade you with a song or tell you a story. Once you see things this way, your world will never be the same. It turns out that this type of work is a gift and a huge step forward for communication. Traditional media methods like TV, radio, print, TikTok, YouTube, you name it, they all struggle to convey the full scope of cultural bedrocks like artwork and crafts and objects and food and performances. But why? Why do they struggle? They struggle because those forms of media are limited to sharing information in one and two dimensions. New methods, however, more comprehensively capture and communicate the nuances and multidimensional aspects of culture, which in turn leads to deeper understanding. I have a dream. Imagine we create a life-size digital twin of one of America's heroes, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And we geolocate him high atop the steps of the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, DC. And at a time of our choosing, we could walk up those steps, put in our headphones, and watch him give his I Have a Dream speech right there in front of us. That time is here. Two worlds, the past and the present, have merged. As a Native American, place-based learning is a very natural way of thinking for me. Since I was a child, I understood that land and nature had both historical and educational value. Augmented reality and geolocation are the tools we can use to extract that value. I believe this nature-centric model, or nature-verse, is better designed for the human experience than a metaverse, because we can stay connected to the world around us, and we can leverage the beauty of our planet and its people. The scope of this work is global. I started this work with Native Americans because that's my community. But what about your community? You see, whether you're interested in Native Americans or not, it doesn't really matter. Because every community on Earth has culture. And every square mile has a story. Thank you.